In this tutorial, I will teach you guys how to create and use arrays in the Python C-Types library. Python and C-Types, what's the connection between them? Python, C-Types, and C. We have these three entities. Well, C-Types is actually an intermediary, a middleman between Python and C. It allows us to send Python data in a form in a way that's compatible with C, and it allows us to receive data from C and basically make it in a way that Python can understand. So it works both ways. We can send Python data to C and we can receive C data in our Python file. Now, how do we, you know, do this? Well, in my previous videos, we discussed how to do, how to do this with regular data types, how to do this with structs, how to do this with strings, how to do this with pointers. This video is all about arrays how to pass arrays from Python to C and how to pass an array from C back to Python. So that's today's focus, okay? If you wanna see any of my previous videos, I will have links to them in the description below, okay? The first thing that we'll take a look at is how to create a simple array. So we'll do something like values, okay? Which is gonna be our array. Then we'll do C types dot now we pick a C types data type, like character pointer, like long, bool, buffer, wait, not, not buffer, I don't, I don't think so, a byte, car, double, float, integer, and then there are all these over here. Let's just go with integer, and we'll create an array of size 10. You do this just by multiplying the data type with the number of elements that you want. Okay, pretty straightforward. And then what you, what you need to actually kind of initialize this. So you need to call this constructor over here, which gives it the default value, which is zero. So if we iterate over this now, and we print out values i, and let me just comment this code out because it's gonna give an error right now. It's gonna print out zero. Okay, all of these values are initialized to zero. Okay, now let me, let me just uncomment that now. And now our goal is to assign some values here. So we'll just assign i, the index itself. Okay, and now our array has values from zero to nine. Now what we'll do is pass this array into our C file and then sum the result and then pass it back into our Python code. Okay, it's a very simple computation, array sum. Okay, now let's come over here to our C file and begin writing some code. We'll call it int sum array. And it takes as parameter a corrector, sorry, an integer pointer. Okay, because we cannot pass an error, we cannot pass in a whole array by a value, we can only pass a pointer to it. Okay, that's basic knowledge in C or C. And then we'll pass in the size. The size is important because we need to know where to iterate up to, like i less than size. Then we do this for loop, we complete our for loop. And inside here, we'll first create a sum, a sum variable. Then we'll, with the sum, we'll basically do the summation, okay? All right and then we'll return the sum. This is some very basic code, all right? I did, I did nothing special here. I just passed in a simple array, an integer pointer, a pointer to an array of values. I passed in the size, I iterated over it, and returned the sum. Now, what we need to do actually is compile this code, okay, using this command, okay? I'll leave this in the description as well for you guys to use. This here is GCC, and if I, was using, if I was using a CPP file, I would use G++. These commands remain the same, shared, generating a shared library, output, okay? This is the name of our shared library, this is the name of our source file, okay? Back to our Python code, and switch back to the Python thread terminal. Let me just navigate over to the correct directory, okay? Tutorials, C types. And this code now, just so you know, 
is basically getting the current working directory, the current directory that we're in, then it basically concatenates that with the name of our shared library. Okay, you can do without this fancy code and just write the pure file path in here. Okay, but uh, I'll just go with this because this is a kind of gener generalized version. Okay, it's pretty handy. So if I run this code now, nothing happens because we haven't actually done anything yet. So I'll create a variable here called sum that's going to receive the return result from our array. Okay, I'll do c library dot sum array, pass in our array, and then pass in the size of the array. Now, if all goes well, this should return the sum, and then we'll print out the sum over here. Okay, just take another look at this. We're passing in the integer array and we're passing in the size. Okay, so if I run this code now, yes, it works. It prints out the sum, which is 45. Whoops. Okay, see, our code is working. If you pull out your calculator, you can verify that the sum of zero to nine is 45. Okay, so this is how we create an array in Python and pass it to C. Now let's do the reverse. Okay, we're gonna create, we'll call it get array. Okay, and okay, actually, let's assume that we're gonna increment this array. Okay, we're gonna get this array and then we're gonna increment it. Okay, and send it back, send an incremented array back to our Python code. All right, so what we'll do is return an integer pointer. Okay, because, you know, that's just how it works. You can't return a whole array. You can only return a pointer to it. And then we return array. And over here, what we'll do is just array plus plus. And we don't need that anymore. Okay, cool. Now, back to our Python code here. We just need to change this to ink. Oh, and we, we need to rec recompile this code. Okay. Never, never forget to recompile. Now, over here, uh, we, we need to change this to array. Okay, let's call it result, result array, or result is fine. Then what we'll do is I trade over this array. Okay, or let's just print it out for now. All right, now uh, just to see if it's working, okay, because this is very finicky. It may not work on the first try. If I run this code now, we get this extremely weird uh, result. Now, what I'll first do, just to be 100% sure about our code, is explicitly, this is something I always do whenever we're dealing with functions that return a pointer, always explicitly declare their return type Okay, and this is how we do it. We declare the return type as a pointer, and it's a po it's a pointer to an integer. Okay, so if I run our code now, yes, it works. See, you just need to do this sometimes, or actually pretty much every time that you're returning a pointer. Okay, don't forget. So over here we have our pointer to a long object. Okay, all right. Uh, this is a pointer, and if you don't already know, to access what a pointer points to, you need to do dot contents. And now this uh, returns a pointer. Whoops, battery low. Uh, it returns a pointer to a C long. A C long variable. Now that's obviously not what we're looking for because we want the entire array, right? We don't want just one value. So how do we access this? How do we solve this problem? What we're gonna do is I trade from one to ten and then print out the result like this result.contents, of course, and sorry, range 10, all right, and let's run this code. Uh, okay, that did not go so well, hold on. Ah, yes, yes, this is how we do it. 
And as you can see, um, we need to actually dereference the pointer itself. I was trying to dereference the uh, you know the first value in the array that it pointed to. That was a bad idea. My mistake. Let me just let me just remove this. Okay, so now this is our incremented array. Remember that our original array was from 0 to 9. This array is from 1 to 10. Okay, now there's one slight flaw here that I'll just point out, is that we cannot tell the size of the array from the resultant pointer. This is a, not a C-types problem, it's just a C problem. You, you need to figure out a way of handling this, like store the size somewhere, or create a, a struct that wraps around an array and a size, something like this, struct array. And this. Uh, if, I, if I create this in C, that is, it'll be something like this. I have a whole video on structs, so you can go check that out if you want to, like this array, and then the size. So you could return this instead, because and it has it has the size. Okay. Anyways, so there's one more thing I want to discuss. I just want to show you guys that. Let me just remove that. Okay. And change this to get array. I'm going to change our function. I want to show you how to dynamically allocate an array in C and pass it back to our Python code. Because you cannot do something like this. You cannot create a simple array. Uh, whoops. You cannot create a simple array like this and pass it back. Okay, you cannot do this. It's not a good idea. Don't don't do it. Uh, because um, how do I put this? You need to dynamically allocate your memory whenever you're returning something like a pointer or an array back to your Python program. Once this function ends, okay. Let me just complete this example, and I'll actually show you why this is a problem. Okay, we're effectively doing the same thing. Okay, same thing that we did in Python. Initialize the array from 0 to 9. It has 10 values, and if I try to return this array, let me just recompile it. And it, it even gives me a warning. It says that you're returning the address of a local variable. This is a bad idea because once this function ends, the memory will be destroyed and will be returning a dangling pointer, uh, an address to a memory location that no longer exists. So this is actually a very stupid idea, but I'm just doing this anyway, just to show you guys. And there we go. It says null pointer access. So, Let's come back here and we're going to dynamically allocate this using malloc and 10 multiplied by size of integer. Okay. Recompile. Come back here. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Run our code here. And now it prints out values from 0 to 9. It's all working correctly now because we dynamically allocated it. But when we dynamically allocate, you need to keep in mind that you need to free your memory. Okay. So we need to, once we're done with our array in Python, we need to pass it back into C and then call the free method on it. And we can't do this in Python because Python doesn't have mem uh, functions for, you know, dynamically allocating or releasing memory. So we need to actually pass it back, okay, like this. So once we're done, do some other stuff over here, do some other stuff, okay. And once you are done, we free memory. And we can do this by clibrary.freeMemory, which is the function we just defined, okay. Pass in our result array. Did I recompile? Let's just do it again. Okay, done. And I come back here and print this out. And obviously you don't see anything happening because it's just freeing memory. But this is important because uh, our program just, just just ends right after this. So we don't notice anything. But if this was a proper application, then we would slowly notice that memory is getting reduced over time. 
it's a memory leak happening. Okay, so this is just something important to keep in mind. Always free dynamic memory. Okay, now this is my video. We discussed three scenarios. We discussed how to create an array in Python, pass it to C, print it out. We discussed how to pass an array from Python to C, then return the same array back, then how to create an array in C and return it back into Python. We discussed three different scenarios. I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope you found it useful. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If there's some other C types content that you think that I have not covered yet, uh, then do let me know in the comment section below and I will take a look at it. Okay, uh, just take a look at my other videos first though, because we have a lot of content in there. We have at least five videos or, or six videos by now on C types. It's it's like two hours of content on C-types. It should be almost enough to cover all your needs if you're using C-types, even if you're using it extensively, okay? Or it's, at least it should give you the foundation that you need to do more advanced and complex stuff, okay? So with this, we'll end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys in the next one. Bye.